Yeah, it looks like it's taping. I must be alive. God, I'm not sure I should be. Man. Too much of the bottle. since uh, well, 1992 actually. We started off in a basement in Bloomington, Indiana, J&B on the rocks, just two drunken idiots ranting at the video camera. Anyway, uh, this is, uh, I guess, the 94th episode of Rocks, and uh, to get things started, I was gonna call Jay. I hope this works, because uh, I've got this little funny thing in my ear. I don't really use it that much. It's ringing, I can tell you that much. Uh, hello? Hey, Jay, it's B. Hey, what's going on, man? Oh, not much. I was just uh, videotaping this television show that we do. Uh, you, are you rolling there? Oh, yeah. That? Yeah, that's right. We were going to make a show, weren't we? Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess, uh, you know, anything for television. So um, I guess I should uh, welcome people then. I'm Jay. I'm your bartender. Yeah, and, and I'm B. I'm the editor, actually. So you could say he mixes the drinks. And I mix the video. Or wait, no, he mixes the video. I mix the video. He mixes the video. Yeah, it's, it's so confusing when you're two people. I know, exactly. And on opposite ends of the country, because, you know, I'm here in Missoula, Montana. Yeah, whereas I'm in New Orleans, so I guess, you know, the joke's kind of on me. Yeah, Because uh, you yeah, may have heard exactly. about this slight little flooding problem that we had recently. Yeah, except, you know, the joke is on me, at least right now, because of this damn hangover that I'm dealing with. Oh, really? You, you had a little much to drink last night? Yeah, I kind of tipped him back, as they say. Um, and then I tipped forward into bed. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, that's kind of appropriate because, after all, this is uh, our 94th episode, Hangover Cures. And well, I thought, who knew? Yeah, I thought we should uh, actually start off with this little video here. Hi, we're here on Bourbon Street asking people about Hangover Cures. Do you have a special Hangover Cure? Hangover Cure? Mm hmm. Alka Seltzer. <laughs> Favorite Hangover Cure is the new Alka Seltzer morning thing. You drink that, you're done, you're great for the rest of the day. 500 milligram of anything, painkiller, and take a aspirin. Advil. Three Advil and a lot of water. Always works, take two. Tylenol 500. <laughs> sleep. Hell nah, sleep it all. I need to talk to Ben. <laughs> oh, me? Sleep, that's what it is. So I got to sleep it all, you know, and that's always in a round and round dream. Sleep. Just lots of sleep, lots of sleep. Last of sleep, and then wake up and drink again. Sleep, sleep, and then grab another drink. Yeah. So, um, I I want I wonder if um, you have any suggestions for hangover cures for this um, most appropriate episode. Well, uh, of course there is the uh, the traditional menudo. I don't know if you're familiar. Oh uh, yeah. But uh, as menudo. You know, it's funny. I just happened to have a can of that right here. <laughs> 
fancy that. Uh, well, I think you should yeah. probably open it up if you can and uh, maybe get to cooking. Yeah, and in, I guess in the meantime, we should show you some more video elsewhere. I just drink two bottles of water after I drink, and I never get hangovers. Here for a hangover is drinking a glass of water, a glass of water after every drink, but then you won't get drunk, so you're adding all that water back in your body. If I do drink, I drink like a couple bottles of water in between, like I drink a bottle of water in between each drink, and you drink a bottle before you go to bed. Water when I wake up in the morning. Lots of water. Water, water a lot of water. Lots of <laughs> Tylenol and some water. Aspirin and water, I think. Uh, big water, six Tylenol. Well, like, I try water, but I just puke it up. A hangover cure, telling your mother all the bad things you did. Whenever I had a hangover once, and I just worked it off. You used to work for me, BC powder. Shit, weed. I'll drink some more. Oh, B vitamins, for sure. Yeah. B vitamins? Yeah. By B vitamins, she means weed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, it's called heroin. Like, I, I'll do, like, a bump and then I'll do a drink, and another bump, and another drink. And most people in New Orleans do that because they do, they do bumps to drink. That's like, it's an alcoholic thing, you know what I'm saying? So, but you have to make sure that you're, you have enough water in between there, like you do a water, drink, bump, water, drink, bump, water, drink, bump. How's it going, Day? Just peachy. Oh, you want me to open the can? Sure. Okay. You know, help a brother out when he's hung over. Wow. This is fascinating video. I'm sure it is. Ew. Oh my god, that looks that horrific. That ain't glue, man. <laughs> that looks horrible. It smells. <laughs> yeah, maybe you should just put the cap back on it. <laughs> um, okay, well, we'll try to heat this stuff up and see if it smells any worse or any better. Um, and in the meantime, again, more video. Vid, vid, video. I, I'm in bed all day if I get a real bad hangover, but I just drink a lot of water and it helps it go away. Take some Tylenol or something. Aspirin and a dip in the pool. Gotta go to the pool. It's gotta saturate yourself. Gotta, gotta go to the pool. A hangover cure? Celery and blue cheese. Eat a full meal before you pass out. That's the only thing I can say. A lot of bread. Yeah, a bottle of Pepto. <laughs> uh, sapphire oil. What is sapphire oil? It's an oil. It's made from the sapphire, sla sapphire sleeve. Eggs. Eggs? Yeah. Somehow they just seem to really kind of fill the soul, and that's what's missing after some uh, some good drinking. Finger. Finger it. You get up. You get up. I get up and walk. I get up and walk like four or five miles if I have a hangover. You gotta get a glass of water, a little bite to eat, and wild sex always does me right. Sex. Sex is a good hangover cure. <laughs> blowjob. When I give someone a blowjob and I drink their cum, that makes me sober up. Makes me feel better. Don't drink cheap liquor. See, the hangover cure is you drink enough not to get a fucking hangover, okay? Thank you. I don't have any. No, I'm not sure at all. I don't think you can cure a hangover. <clears throat> so I guess you're dealing with a, um, uh, a hangover of your own special type of variety there in New Orleans, huh? Yeah, you could say that. I mean, uh, I'm really... We're in the the, the, the so-called recovery process, and it's it's really kind of a pisser because, uh, for example, right now I'm all pissed off because this morning uh, I went to a supposed recovery planning meeting for the for my neighborhood. That's a process that was started by the city council supposedly, and there's just a lot of questions as to its legitimacy, and uh, it's very confusing for a simple man like me. I just don't really know what mm -hmm. to make of it. But uh, yeah, everywhere you look in New Orleans right now, uh, there's you see lots of pain. It's like the whole city is hungover, and uh, and and hopefully, well, we need we need some serious some serious cures down here. I don't think yeah. I don't think a can of Menudo is going to cut it for us. A favorite hangover cure? Uh, open up another drink. Oh, I don't really have a cure for the next morning. I just drink again. It's called Bloody Marys. Yeah, with a lot, a lot of hot spices. More beer? More beer. More Cheap beer. Yeah, somebody told me you should mix beer and tomato juice. Uh, beer. Definitely beer. No doubt about it. About 8, 9 o'clock in the morning, two beers, hangover's gone. More beer in the morning. <laughs> if, you, if you get drunk, stay drunk so you don't have to wake up and you'll be drunk. Just stay drunk. 
You drank the same thing you drank the night before. Getting drunk again! Hair of the dog. My favorite hangover cure? Yes. A little bit of the hair of the dog that bit you. <laughs> Basically, start drinking again. A few more shots. No, I just drink more. Drink more, it'll make you feel better. Have another drink. You got to bite the dog that bit you. We don't believe in hangovers because we are strong alcohol drinkers. <laughs> alcohol pumps through our veins, so no, we don't believe in hangovers. We believe in waking up the next morning and at least drink about 9 o'clock. If you ain't got to be in here by 9 o'clock, something ain't right. Well, it doesn't look like the menudo is uh, even starting to cook. Um, and uh, in any event, it sounds like what we really should be doing is drinking. Uh, yeah, you know, I just wanted to point out to any of our uh, viewers who might uh, subscribe to that theory, the hair of the dog theory, that it's actually a fairly dangerous proposition. I mean, if you, uh, you drink too much, you wake up, you feel like shit, and you eh, I'll drink some more. You might feel better at first, but um, it just sounds like it could lead to some, some real problem drinking. Yeah, exactly. A favorite hangover cure? Yes. Don't drink. The best hangover cure is don't drink too much. <laughs> that, that would be the smartest thing to do, first of all, not to drink too much. Don't drink? Yes. Do you know what causes hangovers? Hey, Victor, who closes hangovers? Dehydration. 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 Lack of oxygen. Loss of oxygen to your blood, probably. Uh, lack of blood to the brain. Uh, lack of sugar or something. Sugar level drops in your blood. Lots of sugar, dehydration. Stress. I have no clue. Having too much fun. Drinking too much alcohol. Yeah, this right here. <laughs> Why do they get hungover? Probably because they drink too much. Alcohol. They get drunk. I guess it, uh, you know the blood and the alcohol and the sugar go to the head and get it cause a headache. So I'm gonna check on this menudo again. See what's going on here. Oh my God. <laughs> It's actually like boiling, but it's still in a big lump, so I think I need to like crush it down or something. Do you know anything about how this stuff is made? It's got these big chunks of um, stuff. Well, maybe it's better if you don't know what's in it. Okay. I think All it right. might be one of those kind of dishes. Yeah. Okay. Well, it looks like it still needs to cook a little bit more. So uh, in the meantime, maybe we should, we should check on uh, something else. Alcohol and lack of sleep and other chemical stuff that's up in my body probably. Too much alcohol. Drinking a lot. Toxins in the alcohol. <laughs> alcohol. I'm assuming drinking bad liquor. Yeah, having too much fun on Bourbon Street, that's for sure. <laughs> too much alcohol. Lack of drinking. Did you stop? Then you need more. Is it dehy dehydration or something? The brain or something like that? Dehydration. 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 Dehydration, yeah. Dehydration maybe? I don't know, I'm not sure. It's a lack of uh, water, isn't it? Dehydration? Yeah. What it does is you're just your brain can't handle the fact that the alcohol has just dehydrated your body so much. Actually, you know what causes them? It's a person who can't handle their liquor. That's It's an innate thing. And we don't have that problem here. So we're going to see if this stuff is actually um, edible or potable or I suppose is soup edible or potable I'm not really sure it depends I think on how soupy it is so yeah, I take I it you've never had menudo before correct neither have I so yeah. I'm interested in your first impressions okay well I'll, I'll just get a small amount out here this stuff it doesn't smell too bad it actually smells kind of bland um, there's these chunks of some kind of like semi-meaty stuff in it. I think that might be the tripe. This feels like fucking Fear Factor, okay. Yeah, speaking of Fear Factor, I just about fell to my death just a second ago. Oh my god, that's horrible. No wonder it's supposed to be a hangover cure. It'll make you puke again until all your guts are empty. Menudo, which is a, a Mexican dish. Tripe and uh, uh, hominy and red chili. It doesn't work, but it tastes damn good. <laughs> it does work. Does work? Yeah. yeah. Menudo? It's made out of um, cow stomach, tripe and beef and pig's feet and hominy. Hominy, and it's like a uh, from Mexico, and it really works. And most people can't get it down. <laughs> <coughs> wow. That's, that's horrific. Um, do you have any other suggested hangover cures? Uh, 
You know, at this point, um, hmm, pickled herring I've heard is good. Oh yeah, pickled herring. You know, it's funny, I actually have some of that too, as luck would have it, in my refrigerator here. And frankly, I'm a little bit more uh, uh, upbeat about the potential of this, at least as being something edible. Oh, it smells much better than the menudo. God, I'm still about to retch from that stuff. Okay, so we're gonna try this then. This is a little filet of pickled herring in wine. And? Wow, it's kind of sweet and good. It actually doesn't even taste much like fish so much as just kind of like a sweet onion wine sauce. I'm feeling better already. Wow, you want one? Um, yeah. Yeah, here you go. Yeah, that actually doesn't work. No. You know, I don't know if you, the home viewer, have realized this, but actually I'm not really able to see you on the other side of the screen, just like I can't really give you a piece of that pickled herring, nor can I give it to Editor B. I mean, that's the, the fundamentally disconnected nature of this television te televisual medium. My worst hangover, white Russians. White Russians, white Russians honestly. Yeah, white Russians. They're terrible. It's the milk. That's right. It curdles in your stomach. Yeah, wine definitely does it with anything. Red wine. Red, Red goose. goose. Yeah, and some weed. Boo -hoo. I'll get more hungover from a big blunt than anything else. That'll hurt my sinuses more than anything, which causes a headache. Cider. Gene. Jen? Yeah, Seagram Gene. What caused my work? Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels, yeah. <laughs> Two half gallons of Jack Daniels. Couple cases of beer. Oh, geez, I think it was rum. No, I take that back. It was Seagram's. Seven and sevens. Crown and seven. Ooh, vodka and orange juice. Oh, Puked dancing. my guts up. Rum and Coke. Long Island iced teas. Long Island. The Long Island does Five and one drink. My 21st birthday, I went out and party at seven bars, had 24 Long Island iced teas. Jesus Christ. Had beer, 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 beer wine, and. Well, it was last night, yeah. <laughs> Uh, probably beer. Beer. Tequila. Tequila. Uh, tequila. Probably tequila. Tequila. Um, Jack. You know, a little bit of everything combined. A little bit of everything in a big old cup. A whole bunch of different stuff. Bacardi light, Bacardi dark, and fruit punch. Uh, and everything else. Everything else? Everything else. I stepped foot first in a three-speed fan and broke it. And they put me to sleep and I don't know what happened. It's anytime I mix things, you know, if I'm drinking like sweet liquors and whatnot. You know. Sugary daiquiris with extra shots or something. Now I've heard the saying that um, beer before liquor never sicker. Um, and I think by and large that's true. I don't remember and that was probably a good thing. Tequila rushed to the hospital dehydrated. Worst ever was uh, we uh, went and got those mini thins, little white cross, you remember the white crosses? You buy them at gas stations, it's ephedrine. Okay. Yeah, it's like speed. Yeah, it's like speed for truckers. Mm -hmm. And um, you, I popped like maybe 15 with some friends and we went to this club and they were given like Jägermeister little tube shots. So it was ephedrine and Jägermeister tube shots all the way up until about seven o'clock in the morning. I was hung over for four days, four days. So. So B, who are these people that uh, that are interviewing all these other people? Yeah, see, that was something we, we I was very excited because because you know shooting shooting video all by yourself can be some kind of, sometimes kind of hard. Like right now, I'm just walking around with a camera in my damn hand, uh, yeah, videotaping myself, and there's only so much you can do. Um, mm -hmm. So I was excited because I got a video posse together, uh, so to speak, and we went down to the French Quarter. This is just before Katrina and shot all this video, this, this uh, man on the street or, or person on the street video. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and my crew were uh, some of my friends, you know, Erica, Scott, and Eric. Erica did all the interviewing, you know, putting the microphone in people's faces, asking them the questions. Uh, Eric helped run camera, and, and Scott just kind of uh, rustled up some drinks for us every now and then, mm -hmm. and generally acted like an idiot. And uh, <laughs> you know what? They all evacuated, of course, uh, when Katrina hit, and none of them have come back. Uh, in fact, really? Scott and Eric are uh, Scott and Erica are getting married. They're in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, we thought that um, we might let them explain where they're at and what's up. 
Holy shit, man. What's going on, Rocks? I'm here in my new apartment in Raleigh. This is what we like to call our FEMA couch. I don't know, what can I tell you? I mean, you really don't want to see my shit. You really don't want to see my couch, and you really don't want to see, like, any bullshit. But what I can tell you is... I don't think we're going back to New Orleans anytime soon. I don't know. Maybe this will work a little bit better if Erica's here. Okay. Hi, uh, this is Erica. I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina. This is where I've been relocated to after the storm. My fiance got a job teaching as a third grade teacher in the city. I ended up actually substitute teaching at that school for a little while in a kindergarten class and then in a fourth grade class full of crazy children. Ooh, oh. But I did learn to love and care about them over time. After that, I worked as a teacher assistant and now I take classes during the day and at night I work um, a job sorting mail, which is it's nice that I, I've been able to recollect the pieces of my life. I did lose my car and I did lose my job in North in um, New Orleans when I lived down there, which is really sad. Oh, I wish I could move back, which I, I, I can't, but. My speech to New Orleans. I'm just really sad about like, so many people that I met in New Orleans I'll never be able to contact. I wish I would have been able to get wear makeup for this whole thing, but you know, this is me au natural. You know, this is me uncut. Bye. <sighs> in conclusion, ooh, ooh. You know, I had a lot of fun there and I didn't want to, it just, it was one Friday, you know, we, it's our second week of school. It was Friday, and it was it was turning out to be a pretty cool year. You know, I could not believe that out of nowhere, I had to like pick up and leave home practically in the middle of the night, and within a month, I'm in a new state with a, the same job, but just in, in a new place and completely out of my element, completely in North Carolina. Completely like missing like the people I had met and I had worked with and that I loved and I look forward to seeing. And I can't see him again. And honestly it feels like the best way I could describe this is that it's like a family member died and it's pretty empty sometimes like when I think about it you know Jay when we started this whole um, episode uh -huh. box number 94 we actually came up with this idea you know pre-Katrina before this disaster devastated my city yeah and uh the, the idea behind it was, well, first of all, we've done a show about uh, drinking alcohol for, for many, many years, since 1992, and yet we've never addressed the issue of the hangover, so it seemed like a natural thing. But more than that, the whole country was, is kind of hung over. Um, yeah, from this damn war. About, yeah, yeah, the war. The, it's, it's kind of like we've had this march to the right all our life, and people have gotten drunk on violence and, and power and imperialism. And, uh, and the whole nation now is reeling from the, the ill effects of, uh, you know, really decades uh, of abuse. Yeah, it's so true. We ask, we ask people on the street about that. Do I think America is hungover? Yeah. When they come to New Orleans, yeah. Yeah. The whole, city, the, the whole country? America? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'd have to say a good portion of it. Sometimes. For the most part, yeah. Yeah. Yes. No. No. I don't. I don't. I don't think they drank as much as we did. Hungover? No. Why? But we didn't do grass. We weren't into dope. We just drank. A lot of Americans hungover. Yeah. I think so. Especially here. It's my first time here, but I think this is a hangover town. New Orleans is definitely hungover. They drink every day here. They start 10:30 in the morning with hurricanes and blend in. I, America is a lot of things. I don't know if there, it's 
if hungover is the number one thing they are? Uh, well, I think the whole I world have, is pretty much wasted. There. Yeah. I think we're halfway there. Absolutely. For your Everybody time. would be okay if they just got drunk. <laughs> is America? Yes. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Yeah. America's always hungover. Not really. I think America's, America's lame. I think America's great. I mean, where else can you, in any other land, walk down the street, drink a beer, 420, and uh, nobody messes with you? I think America needs to, like, you know, keep its nose in its own place and sell other countries, especially with what Bush is doing. I mean, Bush is just doing it wrong. Bush just needs to get the hell out of office. If you work a nine to five job, you're hungover. I think it's delusional, that's what I think it is. From the last election? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they hung over now because of the war. <laughs> um, I think it's hung over on war. I think basically we're done with it. And uh, we're just waiting for it to end. And you know, post-Katrina, it just seems all the more poignant. I mean, the idea originally that we had was that America was hung over. But now, it kind of seems like New Orleans is hungover, like the hangover is kind of almost a metaphor for what the city as a whole is experiencing. I mean, you know, the, the headaches, the nausea, the disorientation, we experience in that every day here. Yep. And if this hangover doesn't kill us, uh, hopefully New Orleans will, uh, you know, survive. Yeah. Well, you know, and in the context of what you're dealing with, ultimately, me having a little headache after a night of drinking, it's not really that consequential and hopefully people um, watching this show will realize that you know life can kind of suck sometimes but it sucks worse elsewhere yeah yeah except for you <laughs> uh, well I guess we should uh, wrap it up uh, is there any closing thoughts that we have well um, I suppose uh, drink responsibly would be one of them don't get a hangover in the first place? Yeah, that's that's probably the best hangover cure of them all. And uh, beyond that, of course, this is a, a television series. Uh, actually, it's just one show in a whole series of programs called Rocks. Yeah. We, we do have a website that if people are interested in finding out more, they can go or to contributing rocks video. Yeah. Contributing video, uh, just watching some of our videos online, uh, reaching out and touching us. Right, in utterly inappropriate ways. That would be something. Yeah. Uh, so, but anyway, right. the website, of course, is rocks.com. Yeah. And people should go there. They can also uh, mail us the old fashioned way at P.O. Box 3241 in Bloomington, Indiana. That's right, 47402. We still maintain that, that uh, mailing address, even though neither one of us lives in Bloomington, Indiana. We're new and old school. That is so fascinating. Yeah. So I suppose that uh, this is wrapping up then, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Signing oh, well. off in New Orleans. This is Editor B for Rocks. And, and this is Jay. I'm in Missoula. And uh, I hope that wherever you are, you're having a good one. And goodbye. They can write a million books with a million different laws. But as far as I'm concerned, we don't need them at all. All we really need is one. One law is all it takes. Have a world of peace. One where everyone is safe. All we gotta teach and all we gotta preach is respect for every living thing. And all we gotta learn and all we gotta earn is respect for every living thing. If we could all just learn this one thing, then everything else would just fall into place. We gotta start with ourselves. Thank you.